Focus on Fractals is 25 minutes long and contains eight segments. The first is a brief review of Mandelbrot sets and Julia sets, which are the fundamental building blocks of fractal mathematics. The next four scenes are zooms deep into the boundary of the Mandelbrot set, which is named after the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot. The purpose of these zooms is to show you how much there is to see in the Mandelbrot set and to give you a taste of the awesome beauty to be found in pure mathematics. The next two scenes are Julia promenades. Every point on the Mandelbrot set gives rise to a unique Julia set. A Julia promenade results from linking together the many Julia sets that arise from taking a predetermined route around the Mandelbrot set. Julia sets are named after the early 20th century French mathematician Gaston Julia. The last scene shows the path of a point as it traces out the Lorentz attractor, named after Edward Lorentz, who is credited with the discovery of sensitivity to initial conditions, commonly known as the butterfly effect. This is the Mandelbrot set. It was created from the equation x equals x squared plus c, using simple iteration, where x and c are both complex numbers. Therefore, the Mandelbrot set lies in the complex number plane, which in this case is the plane of all possible c's. Iteration is the process by which the output of an equation becomes the next input of the same equation in a repeated cycle that ends when x either goes off to infinity or converges to one or more finite values. x always starts at zero, and c is chosen from any place on the Mandelbrot set. During the process of iteration, C does not change. C acts as a constant, which affects the final outcome of X. C is colored according to how fast X escapes, and results in the picture called the Mandelbrot set. Where X does not escape, the picture is colored black. The Mandelbrot set contains a wealth of beauty and detail in the border where the areas of black and color intermix in an infinite frenzy of order and chaos. This is the first zoom. It will start from a point far away from the Mandelbrot set and proceed with ever increasing magnification into the area demarked by the white rectangle. An early theorem proven by Dr. John Hamill Hubbard of Cornell University is that the black part of the Mandelbrot set is connected this means that the many small areas of black, which look like baby Mandelbrot sets, floating off from the main set, are all connected to the main set by an infinitely thin black filament. These black filaments are too thin to be seen on the screen, but they are contained in the fiery yellow prominences that issue from the body of the mother set. It is into one of these prominences that this zoom descends, to find one of these baby Mandelbrots.
Notice the emergence of a new baby Mandelbrot. It is almost but not quite identical to the mother set, and there are an infinite number of them to be found almost anywhere you look. Indeed, if this zoom were to continue into the boundary of the new set, we would find a continuing array of intricate designs that would go on forever, including more baby Mandelbrots. At this point, the magnification is about 48,000. The second zoom proceeds into an area of the Mandelbrot set commonly known as the boot of Italy. It has been given that name because of its close resemblance to the shape of Italy, including the toe and heel. As the zoom proceeds into the toe, you will see that each toe is really made of another complete boot, with both toe and heel. The heel, too, has the same structure. This self-similarity is a common feature to be found among many fractals. Self-similarity means that no matter how much you zoom in on the item, the same general shape is found, thus making it impossible to tell how far you have zoomed just by looking at the shape. This is called scale independence. This means simply that the shape of the object is independent of the scale or level of zoom that you are observing at. Notice, however, that although the general shape of the boot remains the same, it is constantly and slowly rotating, thus forming a very slow spiral. This rotation never stops, and if you could zoom into the tip of the boot forever, you would find that it continues to rotate forever too. At this point, the magnification is about 476 million. The third zoom proceeds into an area of the Mandelbrot set often called Seahorse Valley. Different people assign different names to the shapes they see, but however you would like to name them, you should notice that the shapes on the right and left hand sides of the valley are very different. Notice that the Mandelbrot set contains many spirals. Each spiral is made up of other spirals, a process which goes on forever. And within these spirals are literally an infinite number of baby Mandelbrot sets. In order to demonstrate the theorem that the Mandelbrot set is connected, this zoom descends deep into one of these spirals to find such a connecting point linking together two otherwise separate black areas.
Not surprisingly, the linking bridge is made out of two touching spirals. Sometimes a computer is not made to work hard enough to bring out all the detail in a picture that is really there. This zoom is such a case. And so even though it is not clear from the picture, at the center, where the two spirals touch, is another baby Mandelbrot set. It could even be said that the whole Mandelbrot set is held together by other smaller Mandelbrot sets. At this point, the magnification is 150 million. The fourth and final zoom is probably the most colorful of them all. It demonstrates everything we have learned so far about the Mandelbrot set. This includes extreme self-similarity, endless chains of spirals within spirals, and of course the infinite number of linking baby Mandelbrot sets holding it all together. This zoom also demonstrates another fundamental concept of fractal mathematics which is called bifurcation. Bifurcation means splitting in two and then splitting in two again and again. As we come to the area of this zoom known as the dragonfly wings, we notice that the six-leaved pattern splits into a 12-leaved pattern, which eventually becomes a 24-leaved pattern, a process that goes on forever. In the center of the dragonfly is another baby Mandelbrot set linking the whole thing together. The final pattern is somewhat reminiscent of gene splitting in a cell during mitosis. The final magnification is 6.6 .6 billion. Every point on the Mandelbrot set gives rise to a unique Julia set, which is made from one chosen C taken from the Mandelbrot set. A Julia promenade is made by making a Julia set from many different C's along a predetermined route around the Mandelbrot set. The first route is a path taken directly around the main cardioid of the Mandelbrot set. These Julia sets are then displayed sequentially, showing how they evolve and blend into each other as the route progresses.
This is the second Julia promenade. This time, the path of C is taken just outside of the main cardioid of the Mandelbrot set. This means that C values alternately cross into and out of the black areas of the Mandelbrot set. When the Julia set is made from a C taken from a colored area, the Julia set is disconnected and has no large black areas of its own. When the Julia set is made from a C that lies inside the black area of the Mandelbrot set, the Julia set is connected with large black areas of its own. The resulting connected and disconnected Julia sets evolve into each other in fascinating detail. This is the Lorentz attractor. It is made from three simple equations that control the x, y, and z locations of a single moving point. The point can be started anywhere on the screen and its forward path plotted in space. After each point is plotted, it is plugged back into the equations which then produce the values for the next point. This pattern is called an attractor because no matter where you start the point from, it eventually falls into the orbit that is being drawn out. The important thing to notice about the Lorentz attractor is how the point will spend some time in one wing of the orbit and then for no apparent reason switch over into the other wing. The equations used to produce the Lorentz attractor were first studied by Edward Lorentz during efforts to model the weather. It has been suggested that the two wings of the attractor represent two different climates that might exist on Earth. The first being our present climate and the other a global ice age. In trying to find the reason for the coming and going of the ice ages, it has been suggested that there's no reason at all other than the equations decided to shift gears or flip wings. 
The points being drawn are colored according to how long they have been on the screen. They start off as magenta, and as they age, they change color down the spectrum to red. In order to prevent the image from becoming too cluttered, they are erased after they have reached a certain age. The Lorentz attractor is a three-dimensional object. As it is rotated in space, you can see its true shape and that it does not lie in a plane, although each wing is essentially planar. We hope you have enjoyed Focus on Fractals. If you would like to learn more or obtain a copy of the full-length two-hour video called Mandelbrot Sets and Julia Sets for your school or library, please write to this address for free information. Thank you and have a wonderful day.